Okay, so you got the groundwork and now you're going to hear about some careers. So what we're going to talk about this uh, in, in this set of like set of, of videos, so we're going to talk about uh, fashion promotion, working for a designer or a manufacturer. So there's a there's a whole nother set of careers for fashion promotion. We're working in, working in journalism, um, which we will talk about um, later. You will get those careers as well. But this time we're just going to talk about about promotion for a designer or um, or a manufacturer and it's really important because um, promotion doesn't happen on its own right we think you know some things uh, go viral um, by accident they don't <laughs> we um, see the role that influencers play so it's really important that um, that we know the careers that help support that. So you know, think about this. You're an unknown, you're an unknown designer, um, but you want to become significant in in the fashion industry, and you want to have followers. So you know, when you look through magazines like you know Vogue or W, you know, you're inundated by promotion that are that's glossy and sometimes you know eyebrow raising. Um, you may see editorial pieces. Um, and, and those things are all examples examples of fashion. But styling is promotion, um, and social media is promotion. Uh, so we're going to talk about all of those careers in in the next um, set of slides. <laughs> it's it's quite a few, so I'll break it up into bite sized chunks. Um, and again, as I talk about each career, I will, as always, I will talk about um, you know what is required in terms of education you know, personality traits, qualifications, and, um, and, and always what are the challenges in, in that career. When I was putting this lecture together, I was like, do I start with stylists or do I end with stylists, right? Because styling is a job that everyone thinks they can do. And I'm not saying that to be shady, um, but everyone's just like, I can put looks together. That That's what I, that, that's what I can do. I, I do that really well. Um, but fashion stylists is, is more than that. Fashion stylists, they do almost all of the work before the camera starts shooting. So whether it's for a magazine or TV or film, fashion shows, you know, our personal client, fashion stylists, they do, they put the looks together. But it's a lot more labor intensive than than people than people think that it is. Just think about you shopping for yourself, and you know the amount of items that you pull and try on before you make a, a decision. And you have to do that for even though it's somebody you have a relationship with that you have to do that uh, in, in a bubble, right? So let's talk a little bit about um, exactly what what stylists do, right? So you know freelance stylist stylists. Um, primary part of being a stylist is actually getting work, right? Um, there are stylists who have agents. They usually have reached a level <laughs> in their career before they ha have an agent. But, you know, it takes time to uh, and amount, uh, a, a huge amount of energy to find clients, right? To find work for yourself, to spend time following up with former clients to develop repeat business, running down leads, making contacts with other creative professionals, building relationships with uh, with designers and showrooms that uh, allow you to to borrow clothes, right? So it is not just, like I say with buying, it's just not going, picking stuff, shopping for a living. It's a lot, it's a lot of, it's a lot of work. So, you know, stylists do, um, work on photo shoots. So one type of stylist is a photo shoot stylist and photo shoot stylists just specify those stylists who just, they specifically work with photography. So you see these fashion, fashion magazines here, they just work, work in a, in a setting that puts them in to photographic shoots and we'll, we'll merge the two at the, at the very end. And, you know, oftentimes these stylists are employed by, by magazine. So they're, um, are times where um, the subject will bring their own styling in, but oftentimes the styling is, is done by a magazine or for a fashion show. Um, but stylists, they have to be aware of the latest trends to bring and bring, be able to bring their own amazing resources uh, to every event, right? So, you know, fashion shoots are 
one of the thing that one of the things that stylists do, they um, are responsible for selecting the assembling garments and you know preparing the accessories that are needed and some they work in collaboration with the hairstylist and the and the makeup artist and they make decisions in minutes, uh, quickly determining you know how various um, how how what they pulled is going to be assembled together to show off the best the best features and I talked. The, the two things that I had, the two bullets that I have here are fashion stylists um, and, and photo stylists and fashion shoots, but there are stylists who are lifestyle stylists so um, or celebrity stylists. Um, I have Instagram. I never posted anything on Instagram, <laughs> um, but I follow a, a bunch of stylists, like a bunch. Like I follow June Ambrose and Meredith Coop and Tiffany Reed and... Um, you know, I just I that's pretty much which what I use Instagram for is to is to follow stylists to see what they're what they're doing out out in the world. And, you know, their contacts matter, their relationships matter and getting the right client um, can boost you very far, very, very quickly. So uh, it is really important that. In, in the beginning stages as a stylist, you're probably going to have to, you know, do some grunt work. You're going to have to start at, I don't even say at a low level, like literally as a runner, as an assistant to an assistant and work your way up by developing, developing those contacts and understanding what it takes to be a successful stylist. It's not just about picking out the clothes. It's about making and maintaining relationships with current clients, with past clients, with potential future business and with all of the designers and in showroom. So I want to be a stylist, the qualifications, um, not necessarily a bachelor's degree. Many stylists do start, like I said, as an assistant to assistant, uh, but I always believe a degree is never a bad thing. So, um, you know, some kind of degree in fashion design or merchandising, journalism, you know, fashion communications or photography, visual arts, all of those are all helpful. They are all helpful. Um, you know, some type of internship with a photographer or working, as I said, an assistant or an assistant to an assistant um, is is really important. And then um, you know, the personal characteristics, just knowing that you will have to network and talk to people, having an understanding that this is it's not an eight to five job, right, that you are um, going to be have plenty of 10, 12 14, 16 hour days and that success won't come overnight. Okay. And you know, those are the career challenges as well. You know, those, you know, styling jobs, uh, with large companies. So working for a major magazine, um, are few and far between. And the majority of stylists work as freelancers until they built up enough of a clientele that they can, that they can get an agent. Um, you know, stylists, like I said, they have to make quick change, quick decisions, um, and they have to be able to coordinate a multitude of details at one time to ensure that um, everything they need is taken taken care of. And you know, they have to have that. I always call it like know what's on the horizon, right? The plan ahead. Um, uh, be prepared for anything. You know, mindset. You know, they have to know that they're, since they know they're going to be working in a hectic situation, you have to be pre prepared for anything. So what's in your kit, right? I have that in air quotes, right? You know, so how do you fix a broken zipper? Can you sew a button on? You know, do you have binder clips if something's just a little bit too big? Or what happens if the shoes don't quite fit? So you, all of those things you have to think about. Everything that could possibly go wrong will go wrong <laughs> in a fashion shoot. So you have to be prepared for those things as well. Much like stylists, uh, you know, event producer, event coordinator, uh, is something that people are like, I could do that. I like planning parties, <laughs> right? So, you know, what the fashion event producer um, does, this this is a, a wide array of things. So there are some specialties in fashion event production. So, you know, have you ever been to a pop-up shop or, you know, saw a fashion show, attended a trunk show? went to some bridal extravaganza at some convention center. So if you have, you've seen the handiwork of that, of a fashion uh, event producer. And 
they're also referred to as these special events coordinators. But in the fashion world, they're, they're more known as fashion event producers. And, you know, they have increased visibility now because design houses and brands, um, they coordinate their events, right? They work with uh, stylists and public relations and social media directors to make sure that they have opportunities to put on these large scale events that allow us allow us to um, to see see their brand. Uh, interestingly enough, I, I read an article um, two days ago about uh, Calvin Klein. How Calvin Klein is no longer going to um, they're not going to do runway shows anymore. They're actually closing that section of their business down because it ultimately they it was an advertising expense their uh, items that they produce for their runway show um, brought in such a paltry amount compared to what they would spend to put on the shows that they literally counted it as an advertising expense that they lost money on their designer brands because you know people buy their buy their ready to wear so um, interestingly enough in the fashion events um are expensive and what fashion events producers do is they coordinate and implement um, all of the activities that are needed to promote a brand image idea organization um, and there are a couple of, of different different ways they do that so you know another way to explain it is they just they create exposure right they create exposure um, and they create the buzz right they create the buzz so um, some of the things that fashion uh, event producers do is, of course, they do fashion shows, they do formal fashion shows or informal fashion shows and informal fashion shows don't have the extravagant staging or technical assistance and um, or the supermodels. They just have models. <laughs> right. Um, they work with conferences and conventions. They do opening ceremonies or line parties. They do trunk shows. Sometimes they just do party planning for a brand. Um, they do philanthropic fashion shows. They, they do fashion shows that have some type of um, donation, uh, either with the items being auctioned off or you paying for a ticket to come see a show and the money then gets donated. So it is a very broad spectrum job. And again, the fashion pr uh, event producer is much like the stylist. They have to build their reputation. They start small and they work, they work their way up. But, you know, qualifications here are a little bit different. Um, again, a bachelor's degree is not required, but, you know, like I said, it never hurts. They ha they could produce a much larger event with only maybe one or two years experience. Um, but generally they do start as, as an assistant to a, produ to a fashion show pr uh, producer and then work, work their way up. So, they um, the the qualifications that they need though the the uh, ex uh, personal qualifications is that they have to be able to work with people at all levels so they will be talking if they're working with the brand they'll be talking they may be talking with everybody from the CEO of the company down to the makeup artist assistants right so all up and down the spectrum they have to be detail oriented and proactive they have to be calm under pressure right because things could go wrong. Um, and they always have to have a professional professional demeanor. Challenges are, it's just a lot of work. It's a lot of work. You have to um, be everything to everybody. So you will be stretched very thin. Um, you have to have a strong sense of not just of fashion, but also of organization, uh, the ability to work in stressful uh, situations and communication skills, like I said, with a, a wide variety of people. Um, we're we're going to close it up with the newest type of fashion, uh, fashion event, much like, you know, social media director. Uh, this one literally, excuse my pun, popped up, <laughs> right? So pop-up shops, right? These, uh, you know, are kind of like hide and seek, temporary boutiques, retail spaces that pop up sometimes within a current retail location. So Nordstrom's may have a pop-up inside of a Nordstrom's or maybe a vacant re retail a space that is temporary so that a a, a brand or, or a designer can quickly draw folks in 
uh, open for a limited amount of time and then disappear morphing into something else. And, you know, designers and brands um, goal is to add freshness and exclusivity, often a surprise. Um, often there are pop-up shop exclusives, like you can only get it if you go to the pop-up shop, right? Um, and, you know, some brands use them now to do real-time uh, consumer research before Payless went bankrupt. They had a very interesting one that you will see in um, in the one of the, in the tab in the tab going forward, you will see that that um, that pay less uh, pop up that was great. Um, and you know they want to observe c customers and gather data that is meaningful. So you know whether those items are you know mass exclusive or they have some planned spontaneity or some planned obsolescence, they're only going to make it for a limited amount of time. Um, the example of the pop up is one of the newest types of fashion events.